Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be fixing an easy MacBook Air that appears to be missing PM Sleep S4L. This MacBook Air came from the Paul pile, where all the boards that he claims are unfixable, cause excuses, usually sit. But they're actually fairly easy. And today we're going to demonstrate that, whilst my co colleague over here takes on another easy job of going through all of the liquid damage quicks from when my basement was flooded last year. Isn't it fun to work at Rossman Repair? Indeed. So. We are going to get started here and see what's wrong with this MacBook Air. So let's just turn on the power supply software, turn on Paul Daniels' multimeter software. All right, it's using 20 milliamps. That's the lucky Enel number. Let's open up a schematic in a board view and go through this board and try and figure out why it's missing PM Sleep S4L. Or if it even is missing PM Sleep S4L. Perhaps Paul just made that up. Also, I need you all to remind me that at 2.30 I have a meeting with Vision Engineering because they may just be sponsoring us to put a microscope in a video. That is good. I wanted to do a piece on how uh, ergonomics is important. And I've actually been thinking about when I get the new space of having my personal trainer show up and do a, a workshop of scapula exercises that are for people that sit like this hunched over all day, like me, because it's, it's very interesting. Like, in spite of the you know, 12 years of exercise I've been doing, going to the gym regularly, I have worse uh, flexibility in my, in my uh, scapula area than a lot of people that literally just started working with them because of the staring into the microscope all day. And I also was hoping to have Anel a microscope that's more comfortable for him when he shows back up. So, let's see. Yeah, I know. I'm milking that being an influencer thing. But I never use that influencer thing for anything. I can use it to reduce Anel's back pain. All right. So if we take a look, let's just see if we got some of our main rails. If I have PP5 ES5, I'll know that I have PP bus G3 hot. And let's see if I got that. I do. Do you pulse? You don't pulse. I sponsor you to put Oreo in your office 2020, says JP. Okay, we'll make Oreo the office cat. It looks like Paul has reflowed the SMC. What jackass would suggest that you reflow the SMC just because you're missing PM Sleep S4L? What moron will recommend that... Did I delete yesterday's stream yet? No. Fuck. Hi, hi, delete yesterday's stream. Don't you mean what stream? I mean what stream, yes, what stream. Grand stream, air stream, like Eli has. All right. Now, a dead Thunderbolt chip can sometimes hold it down. We don't see a dead Thunderbolt chip. Mm. Ooh, green. Green by SMC. Interesting. What are you? Here are the 3.3 volts for the AV ref for SMC. And you're there, and you're steady. Okay, you're a pull up resistor that's corroded over here. And you're a pull-up resistor for SMC TCK. That's going to have one of the signals required for the SMC to turn on. But unfortunately, you are pulled up fully to 3.42, so we can't blame you. And over here, as you can see, we have corrosion by our clock chip. Wow, this corrosion by the clock chip. This is the exact problem that I had yesterday with my other PM's Leap S4L missing. OK, let's see if I replace my clock chip and PM's Leap S4L works. I'm going to grab myself a clock chip. You can get these at store.rossmangroup.com. U1900, store.rossmangroup.com. You're in slot E1. Okay, I'm going to get a chip from slot E1. And we go from there. Paul just gave me a PM Sleep S4L that he spent a few hours on, and it's just a bad clock chip. I think Hannah told somebody that I'm not here, and then I showed up to pick up a chip, like as she was saying that. And she just said, wow, when did Lewis get here? In this really, really, very obviously dishonest voice. 
<laughs> no, because like that's the standard answer when somebody asks, "Can I see Lewis?" is no, because I, I'm, I can't, I can't walk up to the front every nine seconds. But <laughs> that was that was awkward. That was funny. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, like if you show up to an Amazon warehouse, do you get to say, "Is Jeff Bezos here?" Uh, then again, he's a multi-million, multi-billionaire. I'm just a bum. So I get how there's a difference. Anyway, so we've went to store.rossmangroup.com, as you can see here, and we've purchased ourselves a U1900 SLG 3NB148CV chip, and that's going to be our clock chip. So what do we go over in yesterday's stream? What do we go over in the video that I just published today? The importance of the clock chip. Now, the clock chip is going to be needed so all the chips that are uh, running off of a particular clock know when to get started. So let's say you have, you know, this machine does, you know, first we execute this instruction, then this instruction, then this instruction, then this instruction. And that's going to happen on a clock. So here you have a 32 kilohertz clock for the RTC. And if that is not working or that's executing in a jagged way, then the instructions are not going to get executed. Now, PM Sleep S4L, which is what's missing on this board, according to Paul, is going to be something that comes directly from the SMC. So let's just chase that back, and I'll show you where that is in the schematic. So that comes from here. Uh, that comes from. Let's just follow this back. This will fix it. <laughs> Paul just put something on the board to help fix it. <laughs> oh, you fucking troll. <laughs> yeah, it's all good now. I can plug it in, right? That's what fixed this. The rice fixed it. So somebody had the rice on this? Wow. People still believe in this shit. Yeah, rice is definitely going to get rid of all that. Yeah, all right. Anyway, so we're just going to go back here and go through. So that signal to create that power rail that was missing comes from PM Sleep S4L. PM Sleep S4L comes directly from the CPU. And what also goes to the CPU? What also goes to the CPU? The real-time clock signal. See that? That also goes to the CPU. So if your real-time clock signal is distorted or jagged in some way, it's going to stop the board from working. So let's once and for all prove that Paul's queue is the easy queue in this store, not mine, by replacing this one that was cherry-picked, not by me, by Paul. Paul gave me the board that he spent time on yesterday, and we're going to prove that it's easy. Don't touch that dial. That's right, folks. Don't touch that dial. So, Paul, if I wanted to make something so that if somebody were to give a donation, it uh, automatically releases a greenie, how difficult do you think that would be? Uh, like, if somebody donates a dollar, it gives one greenie. I think... I think What if when it hears... Paul it yeah, but Paul Daniels... Does. A greenie? A greenie. That would be an excellent way to turn the cat into a total crackhead.
My flux has hair in it. A greeny donation donator sounds like a Raspberry Pi project to me. Yeah, I'd have to learn how to code. I'm clueless. Like, I don't even know what to use the print command. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to rapid cool this board. Okay, it has the board has been rapid cooled. Now we're going to see if we get fan spin. Greeny Donator, a.k.a. Thick Cat Generator. Yes, I think that that would be fun. All right, so let's see what this does. Okay, do we get fan spin? Paul, this is not fair. No fan spin. Give me, I need a fan. How many milliamps are you taking? Don't look. You'll be mad. <laughs> All right, do we have fan spin? Don't look. Don't. <laughs> the cloud ship was corroded. Yeah, but what about the if even if it's putting out three volts, it doesn't mean that the actual clock generation part of it is. There's three elements of the clock generator. So you have 25 megahertz, you have 32 kilohertz, and you have 3.4 volts. Even if the LDO inside the clock chip is good, the rest could be bad. Because think about it. The, the clock chip takes PP3V4 2 in and, it, and PP3V3 S5 in, and then it shoots out PPV RTC G3 hot. It's just passing through the voltage that comes into it. So the, the clock generator section of it is separate from the part that makes power. Either way, this is fan spin. Is, th is this a good probe? Yes. You want to try it? I have the old clock chip here, if you want to measure it. This would, be f this would actually be an interesting project. Guys, do you want to see if this has a clock with the old clock chip? Yeah. So this is the old clock chip. I didn't overheat it or anything. And this is the MacBook Air board. <laughs> you know what would be really fucked up is if you put the old clock chip back on and, a fuck it, and it turns on. Because <laughs> that would mean that all this needed this whole time was flux. I, re I replace it. Re reflowing is not going to fix the generator inside. Because even if it's creating power, there's 25 megahertz, 32 kilohertz, and 3.3 volts, and they're all separate from each other. Water. A clock generator goes bad with even the tiniest bit of water. It's not like a power chip where you have to wait until the power line is gone for it to be broken. Yeah. Or The funny thing is that heat usually kills crystals as well, yet we're always soldering right next to it and it doesn't care. I think that's because the board absorbs a lot of heat. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's why people replaced... You don't really know if it's the bios or the... Yeah, a lot of people replace the bios on this when it's actually the 25 megahertz crystal that's bad. I'm confident we can assume from this sample size of one that the rest of your queue is probably easy as well. Probably. This is all about attention to detail, Paul. It's about not going in there really fast and just putting blobs of flux everywhere and attention to detail. When do we reverse positions? You'll see, Paul. Once we start doing the construction of the new store, 
You'll see it. Because atten- you're going to be on vacation when the construction starts, so I'm going to be starting the construction and be the foreman. And when you see what your office looks like, you're going to understand what attention to detail means. I can't take vacation him. <laughs> okay, people watching. How, ma- how much do you want to bet that the old clock chip is now going to work simply because I touched it? So this is the old one, right? This, this would be a real Frank Grimes, Homer Simpson moment. Spin Paul's chair, there's your fan spin, says the Welsh ones for one pound and 99 ounces. Okay, we're rapid cooling, we're rapid cooling. Okay, now we got to see if it gets fan spin. <laughs> Show the audience, Paul. Show the audience. Okay, so it wasn't even that. It was the chip wasn't even bad. That little bit of green around it was enough to corrupt the clock. Cause think about it, it's 32 kilohertz and 25 megahertz. You don't have to mess up much to mess that up. You reflowed the SMC. <laughs> There was corrosion on the clock chip. Oh, man. Oh, man. I think I can leave now. I can go home. Yeah, that's the rule here. So we have a company rule, which is if you solve a problem that somebody else wasn't able to solve, then you become the exclusive purveyor or or repair tech for that type of problem. That's how Chris became the person that does all the Thunderbolt chip reballs and port replacements. JP says, Paul is best camboy. Oh, this is so funny. I think an ultrasonic would have fixed that. I, that was my next step. <laughs> That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. <laughs>